Hi, this is Mark Pritchard with the WebLogic Server PM team. Uh, I'd like to show you a short demonstration of the two ways in which you can do HTTP session state replication uh, using WebLogic Server. The first is using the built-in WebLogic Server clustering mechanisms, and then the second using the Coherence Web integration with WebLogic Server. And here's where we're using the, the WebLogic Server Active Cache feature. Uh, to run uh, Oracle Coherence cache servers and we have a built-in integration to allow us to use uh, Coherence to offload the session state management from WebLogic Server. So I have uh, two versions of, of an application so we can see here to make it easy to see how simple it is to make changes and it really just involves a couple of changes to deployment descriptors so no code changes at all. I've got two versions of the same application, one using WebLogic Server clustering, one using um, Coherence Web, and I'll deploy these as exploded ear files so that you can actually see what's happening with the, the code where we make these deployments. So to start with, what I've got is a simple WebLogic Server cluster. I've got one admin server here. Let me just refresh that, get these up to date. And then I've got two managed servers that are running as part of the WebLogic Server cluster. Here's my cluster, auction cluster. And then I've got a number of uh, services which are used as part of the cluster. So for example, I have a, a connection to an Oracle database that I'm using. And then I'm also using some uh, clustering features for WebLogic Server uh, JMS. So I have, for example, a uniform distributed destination and a queue connection factory that are part of my JMS module that I also have deployed to the cluster. And then for the application itself, um, we're using the uh, JSTL libraries and also uh, WebLogic Server's built-in Spring support as the application is built using um, uh, a Spring MVC paradigm. And then if we look at the app itself, so you can see we've got a number of modules here. I've got some EJB modules, we've got some um, message-driven bean code in here. We have some web services. And most interesting for, for us is, is the web application itself, which we'll have a look at in just a minute. And if we just drill down into the code here, well, to enable the WebLogic server clustering mechanisms is extremely straightforward. If we just go down into the web app that's part of that here, uh, and I go down into the webinf directory so that I can have a look at the deployment descriptors. All I have to do is look at the weblogic deployment descriptor weblogic.xml and we've got the sort of all the security role assignments here. We've got a, a library reference to pick up the JSTL library and then we have the session descriptor here where we have various parameters and the key one here is replicated if clustered. So because we're deploying this to a cluster target and a clustered domain, we're automatically going to have session state replication. So that's what I uh, have running here. And uh, I ought to support this. I have, um, if we come up here, I actually have a, an instance of Oracle HTTP server OHS running. You can see here, this is my instance one. And that is set up with a listener on port 80, the default port. And here's the mod WL OHS conf. So this is the uh, configuration for the um, WebLogic server reverse proxy plugin that goes into the HTTPD configuration for the OHS server. And you can see here, I've got a very simple definition. So basically I'm proxying everything that comes in on that listen port is going to be sent through to the two servers in the WebLogic cluster. And the, the plugin and the WebLogic server clustering implementation will take care of load balancing, uh, failover, session state replication, and so on. So that's the infrastructure I have. I've started up the application here. So this is running on my, the application itself, the servers and OHS are running on a hosted development system. and here I have my local PC's browser. Here's the application. That's the development system there that I'm working against. So let me just log on to the application uh, and I'll just authenticate myself as the seller. So I'm not um, going to show you uh, 
a great deal of the application all we need to do is just establish some session state so let's go in and we'll just for example look at a number of auctions that I've previously kicked off as the seller and what we can do now is if we just look at the um, the log files from the various servers well you can see here the um, you can see here that the session is currently hosted on the the primary is is this server auction server one uh, the backup is is running on on auction server two so what I can do is just drop those down and if I come back here to my weblogic server console I can go in and I can let's shut down auction server one and I'll just shut that down now just wait and show you that that's gone and then I can now go back to my browser and I can just refresh that and you can see we've switched over to the other server there's no loss of state and I'm you know uh, just able to carry on working uninterrupted so that's just uh, the if you like the traditional uh, implementation based on WebLogic server clustering. Let's just have a look at what I would do to implement this using uh, Coherence Web.